before this, where do you put the big Lebowski as a, in your you know, I just, I've got a, I've got several films that I was very, very fortunate to be in in my career, and that's a bag that I, you know, that well, I carry around. I mean, baggage. That's the baggage I carry. I've got, I've got one bag that's full of a lot of really nice pieces. I'm proud of, and the Big Lebowski was one of them. The Big Lebowski came to me. I was working on a John Milius picture at the time. It came to me in Texas, and I got this script from my agent. I'm sending you a script from the Cohen Brothers. I couldn't wait. I figured, God, Colbert, talk about a chance to get out of this Western thing. Yeah, right. I figured it was going to be some <laughs> really wacky something, you know? Yeah. And so I turn it, and, it, and I'm like on the, it talks about Jeff and the opening page in the supermarket, kind of, you know. Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff Bridges, lo looking at the milk, drinking a milk cart, walking around the market, and then and this voiceover starts, and it says in the description of the voiceover, Something about it, this southern kind of voice sounding not unlike Sam Elliott. You know, I swear to God. And they spelled my name wrong, you know, of course. You know, which I've gotten used to by, at this point in my time. But, and then they, you know, then when the stranger appears and the, he, here he comes, he sits at the bar and a stranger walks in looking not unlike Sam Elliott. So, I mean, to have anyone want to work with you is a blessing. But to have people of that ilk and that talent. And read that text. People that I so respect as filmmakers want to work for yeah. you. I've just been, I've, I feel very fortunate after 40 years to still be at it. You know, it's been really good for me. And it's good, been good to me. The, the thing that occurred to me is why not? Charlie Rose I mean, when you think about your life, think about 10 weeks in your life and all of the things that, that don't follow a film script. You know, and but if you if you look backward on your life, it all fits perfectly because it all happened, and that's for me what this movie is. It's like you can't go to to B unless you've been to A. I, I don't think it ever goes from B to Q. It it follows, uh, you know, B follows A, but it does it in such a way that um, it, there's about three or four different movies here. That I, I just, I mean, I love it. I love it. I just love that, that uh, it's the last thing. If you're looking at my character, everything that happens in this movie is the last thing I expected to happen from the very beginning to the very end. I, I, I think, I think I, I don't do anything in this movie that isn't totally surprising to me. Big part for Haas, and, and Haas is, uh, you know, he wanted a young guy who is, you know, uh, um, alive and physical and fun, and yeah, you know, Haas is all that stuff. But uh, you know, it was um, when he, when he, when then when he relaxed and just got, oh man, it was like, it was. And Tom and Haas worked really well together, and uh, I always felt that, uh, you know, I. In the detention center, he moved me so much. I mean, I was just, it was, when he says, why can't I make my music and live my life? I mean, it's like, and you want to go, hey, yeah, I don't know. Why can't you? You know, that for me was, when he said that, uh, and when we were shooting, I was like, oh, God, I got no answer for that. Um, and I, so, uh, yeah, he is, he's full of life. Oz is full of life, yeah. They all are. I mean, uh, Denai, who played Zainab, she's just, I mean, fabulous actress, a wonderful actress, um, just full of life, uh, incredibly talented actress, wrote a, a piece that she's performed, a, a two-woman piece, uh, just incredibly successful, they, everywhere they take it. Um, and she's right out of NYU. It's amazing. This to Tom, and it's the truth that I have waited my entire professional career to be a part of something like this. And it's, I mean, that's the truth. It was for me, you know, I, I you know, it's, uh, he, he trusted me. He trusted all of us. He put the camera on us and said, we're going to watch. And then when I saw the film, I said, oh, he, he, that won't be in there. It was, it was, you know. Um, and it was an incredible experience. We rehearsed it for three and a half weeks. And I don't like film rehearsals usually. I, I don't, because once you put the camera on there, everything changes. You can talk about it and talk about it, but you know, but once you put the camera there, everything changes. And you said, but in rehearsal we did, and then, and it becomes, a, 
But the way he conducted rehearsal, the way he listened, the way he changed what he wrote, the everything he rewrote got better. Everything he rewrote got more intimate, more interesting, more um, personal. Um, it, it fitted, it, uh, and he, he, um, he um, is so funny. She, she questions everything, and and Tom just loved it. You know, uh, and her questions were, this is the first part she'd ever played in English. And there would be a phrase that was kind of a, an American English phrase. And she said, why, why am I saying this? And he would go, well, you're, she said, I, I would never say this. And he would say, oh, you're right, right. And, and it was that kind of give and take for the entire three weeks. So um, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful. In fact, the speech that I have in the... Um, restaurant where I say I don't do anything. I, I actually was talking one day about that. I said, this guy pretends to work. He doesn't do any... Pre and then all of a sudden, Tom writes this amazing speech and puts it in the restaurant, you know, uh, after the Phantom. So it was that kind of experience for me. And it, and it was, I mean, it was, um, you know, it was a, a collaboration. It was... Uh, exciting it was it was amazing it was amazing and i've said this before it was tiring you know emotionally tiring it was because it was like um i think i'll go relax no you're in the next scene. okay man. now can i go re no you're in the next scene you know it's like you know but i grew up in the theater and that's that's what you did that's what the theater was you know in the 60s that's i grew up in the theater was was you 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 it was about something it was about something happening before your eyes, or it was about something that happened 50 years ago that, that reverberated today. And to make a film like that without, without it being, you know, uh, a polemic, without it being, uh, uh, you know, just a political statement, is, um, it's hard to do. And... Um, so when I read this film, the last thing, I mean, I knew what he was making the film about, but it just, it's like, you know, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. It was truly a character study for people. And from it, you glean what you glean. And you, you, can, you can agree with what he's talking about or not agree. But I don't think it, I don't think that it diminishes the film, you know. And, you know, to know somebody who's in detention changes everything. Okay, it's like, it's like, I mean, an artist like Tom McCarthy, his whole life is spent thinking about what it's like to be in somebody else's shoes. I mean, and that is, I mean, that is so important for an artist. And, and I say that because Tom, he is an artist. He's an artist, uh, you know, as a writer and a director, he's an artist. And, but he, he puts himself in other people's shoes. And what would it be like? To be that person, and I mean to, to, as opposed to saying, well, that that doesn't concern me. That that's not me in that detention center. Therefore, I'm not really. Uh, he doesn't do that. He constantly. He's so interested in other cultures and other, and the way other people live and think and eat. And he, he loves it. He he loves it. He just loves it. And just to be around him for me, it was like you know, he was this guy younger than I am who's done more than I have done, and which isn't hard. I mean, please. Uh, but um, uh, and uh, that that's his movie. That's his movie. You know, it's not a political statement. It's about these people. Gonzo subway shot, which uh, my being a Midwestern fearful human being, Tom said to Oliver, <laughs> DP, OK, and they had the camera in a bag. OK, because we needed some subway shots and uh, we had permission to use the subway one night and uh, we didn't have. Oh, we jump on the subway. I'll take out my camera and I'll shoot you. Me riding the subway. We have to do it two or three times. And I said, what if they catch us? He said, stop. Will you stop? I said, no, but what if they catch us? I'm just like the biggest chicken. I mean, I'm just... And so we get in the subway and Oliver's got the camera and he's lying down. And, you know, we get... And people walking by looking. But, you know, they didn't really... You know, it was a guy with a camera shooting somebody else in New York City. We did that a couple of times. We shot down in the subway uh, walking... Uh, I'm playing drums. I don't even know if we had permission that day either. I don't know if we did. I, I stopped asking after a while. I just. You know. I said, 
you know, I, I really said to Tom, I want to, how do I show that this guy is in love? What do you do? And um, I said, can I change my glasses? And oh my God, we went. And he said, okay, all right, let me think about it, let me think about it. And um, I, <laughs> the last minute he goes, yeah, do it. I said, because we're screwed if this doesn't work. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're in trouble if this doesn't work. And he said, I know, but do it, do it. I think we'll do it. And um, he never showed them until I, then, until Muna notices the glasses. Yeah, yeah. So I did like that. I thought that was really, really fun. But again, it's how he took that and put it in the movie. He actually had a scene where, where there was a card. After I called her, there was a card that said glasses half price. And the next thing you know, I have new glasses. But that gives it away. So he took that out and uh, went right from that to her going, you have new glasses? Yeah, that's great. Aaron, who for years has always said, please don't tell me about the movie. You come home and you say, and we did this today and this today. She says, I have this movie in my head. And when I go to the movie, it's like, well, wait a minute. So she said, don't talk about it. I said, I, 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 I can't not talk about it. So we saw it on a little screen in the editing room once and and she liked it she liked it but I thought, and then at toronto she watched it and turned she said i had no idea she said i had no idea i couldn't see what was going on um and i yeah that's good but uh, uh i do I, I talk about it constantly with her and then she said it's never what i think when i go see it it's like i have this movie in my head and it takes me about an hour to get that out of my head and it, Uh, we did. We went to the detention center, and I met a man who uh, had been in there six months. He had come to this country sponsored by somebody, who then died, and he lost his sponsorship, and he applied for I think a visa or something, and, and they didn't give it to him. He just kind of went underground, and they found him, and they wouldn't tell him what was happening. He can't. He couldn't contact anybody, and he said. I mean, it was, I just listened. He just talked and I listened and, and it was, uh, it was so lonely. It was so, he was so alone. That's the thing that I, he said, you know, I don't, I wish they'd send me away. He said, I, I, I came here because he said, but if they told me I could go, I wouldn't, I would leave. I would leave. And he said, I didn't do anything. I didn't do, I tried to do the right thing. And, and uh, this went on for, you know, and, and I was like, I, what do you say to him? I'm making a movie. I'm an actor. Can you help me out? You know, I mean, it's like you, you feel like such a kind of a prostitute standing <laughs> listening to this guy and using it for. But it was incredible to hear. And Tom, well, he'll tell you that, that he's had this experience and, and he wanted us to meet. He said, I want you to I want you to meet a person that's living this way. Um, and they don't know they can be transferred any time to any other facility or deported without notifying anybody. 